Good morning. It's still morning. And thank you for showing up for your learning. If your team learn at home, thank you for checking in with us on YouTube. Today, our lesson is on factoring quadratics. And our main learning goal is can I take a standard form quadratic and change it into factored form? This way, I can uh, tell you the roots of that quadratic very easily. So, we want to recall that factored form looks like this. A times x minus r times x minus s. And what does that mean when we have an equation like this? Well, it tells you where does that quadratic cross the x-axis. For what values r and s is the value of the quadratic equal to 0 in the y. Okay, this is all y equals 0 along here. And finding these points of the quadratic is often the key to solving various application questions in the world. So we want to know these things. So factored form is super useful. And remember that if we want to change a factored form quadratic back into standard form, we expand and simplify. So in your table groups or individually, practice expanding these to standard form. I'm going to freeze the video and then we'll pick it back up when we look at the solutions here. All right, let's take a look at uh, these ones. So here's, here are my solutions, and you can compare them with yours. Oh, and let me unfreeze the screen. When we did FOIL, these were the terms that I got, and I'm seeing these around the room. So let's go quickly here. X times X gave us X squared. X times 7 gave us 7X. Negative 12 times X gave us negative 12. And negative 12 times negative 7 gave us negative 84. That simplifies to this. And the thing that I want you to notice is that B, here B is the number negative 5, because this is a quadratic in standard form where AX squared plus BX plus C, that's our standard form quadratic. B was negative 5, which happened to be R plus S with the signs reversed. Negative 12 plus 7 gave us negative 5. So that was adding together. And then C, this number here, which happened to be negative 84, we got that number by multiplying R and S. So that's why X game helps us go the other direction and unpack a standard form quadratic into its factored form. Over here with G of X, this was more complex. Here we did 3X times 5X to get 15X squared. 3x times 8 to get 24x, negative 2 times 5 to get negative 10x, and negative 2 times 8 to get negative 16. And then collecting like terms gave us another quadratic in standard form. Now, that's why x game is useful because you have the b number is the sum and the c number is the multiplication. So let's take a look at how we can use X game to factor these types of quadratics on the back of your sheet. If I'm playing this X game here, where I want to multiply to 35 and add to 12, what two numbers will multiply to 35 and add to positive 12? Izzy. 7 and 5. So 7 and 5 are the winning numbers. They go there and there. Notice that they're both positive because we're multiplying to a positive number and adding to a positive number. So to solve these, I can just thump that in there into the brackets along with X. And then we can check our work using FOIL. You can check to see if X plus seven multiplied by X plus five is indeed F of X. F of X was X squared plus 12 X plus 35. So do X times X gives you X squared x times 5 gives you plus 5x, 7 times x gives you plus 7x, and 7 times 5 gives you plus 35. Looking at this, we can see it's equivalent to that because 5x plus 7x is just 12x. So great, it all worked out in the end. And I encourage you to check your answers throughout this unit because checking your answers gives you that extra pump of your math muscles and will really convince you that these things are indeed equivalent when you do this work. Okay, let's carry on. So now let's play another X game over here 
what numbers do I put into my X game here to solve, to factor G of X into its factored form? Yeah, which one is the multiply to? Which one is the add to? Yeah, I need numbers that multiply to 48, that multiply to C, and add to B, add to negative 14. So what numbers add to negative 14 and multiply to 48? <coughs> this one's a little trickier. I'm looking for numbers multiplying to a positive number but adding to a negative number. What does that tell you about the signs of these two numbers we're looking for? They're both negative. Good. Yeah? Negative 7 times negative 7 is really interesting because it's almost. It's so almost. It multiplies to 49, not 48. Oh. Yeah, but it adds to minus 14. But that tells you you're right close and you're right in the right neighborhood. Yeah? Uh, negative 6 and negative 8. There we go. Negative 6 and negative 8 is the solution. So how do I write this in factored form? What does it look like? This is what I always do. And I did this for you in the other problem. I want you to do it here. Write out your double brackets. Put X in the front of the brackets. And then put in your other two numbers after that. Minus 6, minus 8. Quickly check by expanding. X times X is X squared. X times negative 8 is negative 8X. Negative 6 times X is negative 6X. And negative 6 times negative 8 is positive 48. It checks out. That is the same as G of X, so that is indeed G of X. They're equivalent. They're the same. This one is in factored form, so I can much easy, more easily tell where this one is equal to 0. That one will be equal to 0 when x is 6 or when x is 8. And I can just read it from there. Let's keep going. So try these two, h of x and j of x, and turn them into their factored form. Practice, and I will pause the video, and we'll come back to look at solutions. Welcome back to the video, everyone. So here are my solutions for h of x and j of x. I'm seeing these around the room, which is great. People have set up their x game with a c on top and b on the bottom and found 9 and negative 6 that add to 3 and multiply to negative 54. Just pump them into brackets with your x's, and you have an equivalent expression. Great. Over here, same idea. But now, things get more difficult when a is not 1. Okay? When this leading coefficient, this coefficient is a number that multiplies our variable, when it's not 1, when it's bigger than 1, we have more challenges. Here is one thing that you always want to do, is check for common factors. In this case, I notice that 2, 8, and 6 all share a number in common. They all share a multiplicative factor. They're all divisible by... Two. They're all even numbers. They're all divisible by two. So I can factor two out, and then I divide all those terms by two to get x squared, plus eight divided by two is four x, and six divided by two is just three. Notice that if I were to go backwards here with the distributive property and distribute that two in by multiplication, it would recreate that line. That's why these two lines are equivalent. Now I can factor this one with x game. I want to multiply to 3 and add to 4. What numbers multiply to 3 and add to 4? Sorry? 3 and 1? Yes, 3 and 1. 3 multiplied by 1 will give you 3, and 3 plus 1 will give you 4. So this is just x plus 3 times x plus 1. Okay? So now you try g of x on your own. Talk me through this one. What's our common factor for g of x? What number is common to all that? Five. So let's take the five out, and we're going to get x squared plus what next? Inside this bracket. Just plus x because we take 5x and divide it by 5. Minus what? Minus 6. You take 30 and divide it by 5. This line here is the same thing as that line. But now I've got something much easier to factor right there. So now we set up an x game. 
what two numbers multiply to negative 6 and add to 1? How do I multiply and get 6? Or negative 6 in this case? Kind of two ways to do it. And then flip the signs gives you four ways. 6 times 1 or 3 and 2? Good. If I have one negative sign that I can use and I want 3 and 2 to add together to give me positive 1, which one's positive, which one's negative? Yeah, 2 is negative and 3 is positive. Those multiply to negative 6 and add to positive 1. So this is equal to, at the end of the day, 5 multiplied by x minus 2 times x plus 3. Cool, cool. Now, are you ready for probably the hardest algebra we do in the course? Maybe not the hardest. Maybe uh, completing the square is a little harder. But now, if A is not 1, and you've either taken a common factor out already, but A is still there, there's still something in there for A, we're going to play a special X game in this case. Okay? This is, this is my method to do these. So, what we're going to do is take the A and the C here. 2 and negative 2. And we're going to multiply them together, A times C. So what's 2 times negative 2 in this case? Negative 4. So I want numbers that multiply to negative 4 and add to this B number here, negative 3. What are those numbers that multiply to negative 4 and add to negative 3? Well, negative 4 and positive 1 would do it, Mr. Jennings. Ah, very good. You got it. So negative 4 times 1. So then what we're going to do is use these numbers and decompose the middle term. So you're going to decompose the middle term. And what that's going to look like is we're going to write 2x squared minus 4x plus x minus 2. So I just took negative 3x and written, wrote it as negative 4x plus x. That's a new way of writing negative 3x. I was told how to break it down by these two numbers that came out of my special x game. Okay? That's called decomposing the middle term. The middle term decomposes into two terms. Then what we can do is we can see that 2x minus 4x has a common factor. What's the common factor of 2x squared minus 4x? They're both divisible by 2? 2x, good, that's perfect. They're both divisible by 2 and x. So we can factor out 2x from this one. So we're going to write it this way, 2x multiplied by x minus 2, okay? And then x plus 2 here, well, there's no common factor there, so we're just going to say plus 1 times x minus 2. This is a special case where 1 can come out as a common factor. Right. Now, notice that we had x minus 2 as a binomial factor, showing up in two places. Now we can factor out that binomial factor from this term and this term. So it would look like this. x minus 2 multiplied by 2x plus 1. Done. Done. Yeah. Now we can expand this to test it and see if it's true. Okay, the way you would expand it is just using FOIL. Let's see. x times 2x gives you 2x squared. x times 1 gives you plus x. Negative 2 times 2x gives you minus 2x. Sorry, minus 4x. Minus 4x. And then negative 2 times 1 gives you negative 2. Notice that 2x squared plus x minus 4x minus 2 was what we created on this line. And then it's also the same thing as this. Okay. 
So I've given us a challenging problem over here, g of x. Let's see if we can push g of x across the finish line. First, we're going to play a special x game. And we're going to take a and multiply it by c. Oh my goodness, 15 times negative 16. Holy. Well, let's work that out. 15 times negative 16 is going to be the same thing as 30 times 8. If I just borrow one of those factors from the 16 and move it over to the 15, it gives me an easier multiplication question to do, right? 30 times 8. 30 times 8 is 240. So that's negative 240. Check your calculator. You'll find that's true. Okay, so we want to multiply to negative 240 and add to 14. Positive 14. How can we do that? Multiply two numbers together to get negative 240, but they add to positive 14. The numbers kind of jump out at me. Maybe they jump out at you. What's an easy way to multiply to 240? 24 times 10? See it now? Yeah. Yeah. So this one jumps out at me. If it doesn't jump out at me, what I'll do is create a factor tree for 240 and then play around with the different ways I can multiply to make that. But here, 24 times 10 works because the difference between 24 and negative 10 is just what we're looking for. Okay? So these are the numbers that we use to decompose that middle term. So let's go. Our next line is going to look like this is equal to 15 x squared minus 10x plus 24x minus 16. Okay, I grouped the 15 and the 10 together because I know 15 and 10 share a factor 5. Uh, 15 doesn't share factors, uh, shares a factor 3 with 24, so it will factor out a little differently. So I like this a little bit better. So next, we're going to factor out from here a factor 5x gives us 3x minus 2 when I factor that one. Now let's factor something out of these. Looks like 24 and 16. What's the greatest factor there that they share? Looks like a snowman. 8. 8 times 3 is 24. 8 times 2 is 16. So 8 is our biggest common factor. So we're going to have plus 8 here. And that's going to be 3x minus 2. Notice that when you've played that special x game, decomposed your middle term, and then done this common factoring trick, the same binomial factor will appear twice. That can be factored out of each term. And we end up with this being equal to 3x minus 2 multiplied by 5x plus 8. And that is done. If you notice on the previous page, I had you expand that one already. And we have 15x squared plus 14x minus 16. And that's 15x squared plus 14x minus 16 there. Same. So this is how you factor quadratics. The last thing that I want to highlight is how do we tell if uh, how something is equal to zero or not? Well, let's not do this in Desmos. Let's do this on a blank piece of paper. So I'll move me, get a blank piece of paper out. This is something you're going to want to add on to your notes. If I have something like 5x, five, five what was it again? 5x plus 8 times 3x minus 2. If I know this is equal to 0, well, how are we going to solve that? Let's look at an easier example first. If I have x minus 2 times x plus 1 is equal to 0, then one of these two things must be 0. So either x minus 2 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. In this case, x equals 2 is one of our solutions, or in this case, x equals negative 1 is the other solution, right? 
In this one, it's a little more complex. Either 5x plus 8 equals 0, or 3x minus 2 equals 0. In this case, we have 5x equals negative 8, and then divide both sides by 5 to get x is equal to negative 8 over 5. Over here, you have 3x equals 2, and x equals 2 over 3. Done. Is he? Yeah, sure. So that's the end of our lesson. Any questions, absolutely hit me up by email or come find me. And uh, your practice problems are, as always, in the D2L, and I'll write them on the uh, front board. Oh, uh, yes, in just one moment. I'll just get your practice problems and then uh, put it up. Oh, and I'll say goodbye to the video. Bye.